Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Camera Tuesday. In today's episode, we're going to talk about Canon C500 Mark II. So let's dive right into it. Well, first we have to understand what we are talking about. We are talking about a full frame cinema camera. You have to understand this way. Digital photography took over the world very quickly. However, cinema industry kind of uh, lagged behind simply because in the early days, there was not enough technology to move to digital video. I mean, like Star Wars prequel was shot in mind blowing resolution of HD. Yeah, it's like a Sony cameras were specifically built. It was like the size of a tank specifically built just so it can handle full HD. So uh, there is a lag in there and the most common format, basically the size that is commonly used for digital uh, cinema photography is generally super 35. Now it sounds like 35 millimeter. It's super. It's just uh, inverted. Uh, basically, instead of like this, it's like this. So they can have more frames in a roll. Uh, benefit more frame in the row. Side effect, it's more or less like an APS-C size. The surface area you have for actual use is more or less like a uh, APS-C crop sensor. So it's not full frame. That is why this camera is a big deal that Canon is going full frame. Now, uh, uh, over the past few years, electronics have improved so much and desire and demand for a uh, like, you know, large format cinema camera has gone so up that uh, uh, RE, which generally does not follow the trend, they built a huge camera, like 65 millimeter, like almost double the surface area of a full not double like almost triple the surface area of a full frame and that was used for uh, basically avengers endgame and all that jazz and there is another camera which was used for uh, dunkirk which has like even a huge huge sensor and for uh, same sensor, uh, large format was used for joker so you can understand the cinema industry is moving to a point where super 35 is just too small so full frame is like you know starting point now so this is a very uh, quick response to that because you have to understand canon did have that even sony had a uh, you know quote and quote full frame cinema cameras those, those were like you know very very expensive ludicrously expensive so c700 was the canon sensor however this time they are making it more quote and quote affordable now it's a proper raw 4k 60 frame per second now there are many uh, full frame mirrorless that has one of those things whether they have okay 60 frame per second but it's not full frame it will crop it like panasonic cameras uh it has 4k but it like you know it crops to like micro four third like canon eos r so there is always like some who high like oh no you cannot truly do 4k 60 frame per second right now and sony does not even go to 60 frame per second so uh, you cannot really push uh, uh, like you know 4k 60 frame per second reliably out of any of the mirrorless camera or hybrid camera you need a proper cinema camera for that however even though this has so much oomph behind it i'm mean, like a giant sensor basically it still is quite compact and small relatively speaking it's almost 1.7 kilo it's more or less the same weight as a uh, canon 1dx mark 2 uh, mark 3 so that's what a big deal about it and it also has internal nd filters so what are the unique features about this one of the amazing features that i really love is that they are going to cf express now if you are confused by what is this cf express xqd think of it this way uh compact fast cards did not sell as successfully sony's xqd card did not sell as uh, successfully as they both expected so they both joined forces so sony gave the physical standard aka xqd card and uh, compact flash association standardized the rules and regulation basically protocols and all that jazz so you got c fast express now why cfast express is a big deal is simply because it goes changes the protocol itself so older uh, compact uh, fast cards were basically sata uh, the way you connect your normal hard drive now it's not a bad system it's 600 mbps capable and i'm talking capital b not small b capital b capable so this is a big deal i mean like your computer runs on it your ssd runs on it red epic cameras run on that red dragon almost all reds are on that speed so it's quite good however when they switched because uh, sony was already building a cinema camera they had s XX, which was using PCI Express, not SATA, PCI Express, they were capable of much larger speed. So utilizing that, the new uh, basically system that was created, CF Express system, it's on a different ball game. So on these cards, right now available, uh, you can easily find like you know up to one terabyte card, up to two terabyte card. On top of that, these cards can write, not read, write at 1.2 gigabyte per second right now. The, with the cards that are available right now so that's almost twice as fast now read the read can go as high as like 1.9 uh, gigabyte now it's like why does that matter well that allows this camera to have raw internal recording which sony does not do which almost no camera does that because 
you need something that can absorb that kind of data the only way you can achieve a true raw recording is basically having s ssd recording which is like you know done on an external recorder using ninja uh, five inches or something like that so it's quite amazing they are going with this and uh, this is the next standard sooner or later it will catch on and as Nik uh, like companies as big as nikon jumped into this as big as canon jumped into it sooner or later it will catch on so i can easily see this replacing sd cards on uh, big cameras and sd card will only remain as a micro sd for smaller things so it's quite amazing and this also also uh, you know workflow advantage think of it this way you pull this card out you give it to, to your know, person who is handling it he's gonna dump it the file into a server and it can dump at 1.9 year basically you hold it done go home start start working so that's amazing like if you can save a production house like you know five minute times every time they have to empty the car that's a lot of time and money saved so amazing thing and Canon did not stop there. Canon was like, okay, that's good. Let's make it awesome. Now it has a micro SD card. And I'm like, why the heck you have SD card? Because in the production environment, a proxy file is almost a necessary because the raw footages are so huge, so uh, intensive, computer intensive that unless you have like a ludicrously powerful computer, even then you will not be able to handle it. So what do you do? You create a proxy file. So what this camera is doing is like creating a proxy file internally. Basically, you can be like, okay, use my CFast Express card to rec raw record and uh, SD card for my uh, basically uh, proxy file so what can what does that allow you this uh, very amazing thing is basically you will generally have two people's working for you one you will be your video editor another would be your colorist so you can literally take out the CFAST server give it to colorist colorist is like okay I'm gonna tune the color then you can give the basically proxy file to the video editor and the video editing and coloring of the footage will go on simultaneously so you're at the end of it both of them could be combined without any issue and you only have to render once and everything is fine and ready so it's quite amazing thing and uh, they listen to the customer feedback is like you know c200 c300 they were good capable camera however the touch screen was like literally out of 2005 or something like that it was so small like it was not bad quality by any stretch of the imagination but just too small and it's a freaking cinema camera you need to see so this time they have updated the screen so that's really useful now this is one big thing for canon is that canon started to give swappable lens mount now that is a very big deal think of this way because there are two major lens mount that is quite uh, popular with the filmmaker community one is canon ef system which canon was like i own that i can easily give that and there is another which is pf which has been used for 150 years so you can understand that like people want both of them but uh, with canon you either had to have a second camera with that exact mount or you have to send your camera to canon where they're gonna upgraded same with sony and all that jazz so when kfinity came out with this idea that hey we're gonna give you the camera and adapter is something that you buy basically hey you use sony system okay buy it put sony adapter you want to use canon system buy it put that adapter so canon is following footstep of uh kfinity system so that is quite amazing and this is user swappable so you do not have to go to a shop where they're gonna do it for you you can literally buy and be like, hey, I have both of the adapter in my box. So if, let's say, for some professional shoot, uh, they already have certain lens, they are already selected. It's like, bro, I got this. So that is amazing. And the whole design is literally uh, learning from red system learning from kfinity system and it's much more modular than any previous canon camera so instead of just having oh you can have the viewfinder or not have the viewfinder there they have why not both basically it's user replaceable so that is the amazing part this time it's like literally canon listen to the public and it's like okay we're gonna give you what you need what you want so feature wise it's amazing so what about the performance? Well, uh, what do you want me to say? It's simply uh, better than C200 and C300. However, uh, do not expect your images to be like, whoa, don't expect that. Do not expect like this camera to like directly compete with like, you know, highlight roll off on a skin compared to a uh, Alexa camera. That That is like Alexa's trademark. When you see Alexa, how smooth the uh, highlight roll off is there in the Alexa camera, you're like, I'm not touching other camera. And you will understand how, why the heck Alexa's are still a popular choice, even though red exists. It's like, they know that part. So Canon does not go that high. However, it does have uh, depth of field so think of it this way that uh, movie when you saw like you know uh, joker specifically they use that to like uh, nth degree and even the movie her that was both of the oh, same actor yeah both of them are quite amazing and you can see like shallow depth of field was used brilliantly but if you want to do that you need huge lenses huge lenses do not work well with small sensors they need huge sensors and like for uh, joker they use this uh, Alexa LF that was like you know 65 millimeter medium format so you get the idea like if your colleagues are going into shoot with uh, super 35 which is APS-C you are going with proper 35 you're gonna destroy their ass 
so it is very amazing like that benefit that alone hey my canon lenses is now you know flexing its muscle now i'm getting that feel the light everything you're gonna love it then the true aspect is it's 5.9k why 5.9k why not 6k again 6k is a useless standard because if you crop it down basically scale it down it does not go 1 to 4 you always need 1 to 4 for proper uh, what we call noise reduction basically you can drop 8 to 4 no problem because per pixel will map into uh, you know 4 pixels so it's quite amazing but if you do 6 it's not 1 to 1 ratio compression so it does not work that well you still get some resolution boost but it's not that great and uh, the sensor I don't think they had the yield that matched to uh, basically 6k and again it's not that much of a big deal so you can utilize 6.9k in two ways one you take the same footage and use like you know extract detail out of it or you can use that as a pan tilt system basically that gives you flexibility which you can utilize for image stabilization now another aspect it goes up to 120 frame per second now sony cameras can also do that i'm talking with cinema cameras they can do 120 frame per second but be mindful the moment you do that in sony cameras they will drop the resolution basically your uh, field of view would be like this but resolution will go from 4k to full hd however when you do this with this your resolution will remain the same but your uh, image uh, basically sensor field of view will drop down drastically basically you will go from zero uh, x crop to 2x crop micro four third kind of crop and uh, potato jet has done that video like it's like whoa like you know full cream yellow and now why why does that uh, you know translate into a big deal the think of this way let's say you have an action scene planned out you read the scene and in some scene you want to interplace uh, basically high speed footage you cannot do that because you have to physically move back the moment you move back your framing would be the same but the background will change because again you physically move backwards so framing would be like yeah person is like this much but everything behind them is looking differently however in sony's case it's much more easier to splice full hd footage into uh, 4k footage while you are increasing the frame because your, your eyes will uh, absorb much more of the motion so you'll feel high quality so sony's approach is better in this regard and not to mention their drop autofocus also so that do not get too excited about it. it's like 60 frame per second it's like i got this i'm the best in this but don't expect anything above that now digital image stabilization now this is mindful the moment you touch it it disables the autofocus system uh, autofocus i'm saying uh, basically canon raw you cannot get 12 bit footage out of it if you do uh, digital image stabilization and the image stabilization is it, it's good but not great and th that is the reason why that 5.9k is important the moment you do that 5.9 will disappear only 4k option will be there so you can either rely on the camera's algorithm to do uh, image stabilization or you can shoot raw direct raw get all the color latitude 12 bit hoo ha and then crop in the post production so if you trust your production pro production post production rely on them if you don't rely on the camera then uh, you have uh, two major options so ma option number one cinema raw light 12 bit option number one option number two h264 for some reason <laughs> 422 10-bit mp4 now again it will consume size but we have to understand see fast express cards can up to come up to like one terabyte right now you can buy one terabyte and four terabytes are under construction so that is the benefit of going to nvme over pci express like whole computer infrastructure becomes open to you so i uh, i can easily see the moment uh, these cameras start to catch on more cards start to come out and the moment samsung starts to release the cards for that the price will come down enough so Performance wise, if you have this camera and you're not getting uh, what you want, either you have uh, misconfigured something or you do not know what you're doing. Basically, you cannot, after buying something, equipment of this caliber, you cannot say, hey, uh, you know, the camera is not suiting my need. So what about cost and competition? Well, uh, the cost is huge. $12,000 so it's uh, so big that if you are comfortable or uh, if you know exactly what you're doing or if you are doing a lot of indoor shooting or studio shooting where you can control the lighting you can be like hey I'm gonna buy a let's say a full frame mirrorless camera have uncompressed output from HDMI have a ninja with a SD, uh, SSD and I'm gonna get 4 to 2 10 bit raw and then uh, you know I'm gonna invest the remaining money in lenses you can get very close to this however not like, you know, you, you can still be limited to 12 stops of dynamic range, but this puppy goes to 15 stops. Now, is that a big deal? In controlled light? No. But in uncontrolled light, basically think of this, so you're shooting outdoors and randomly clouds started to come in and you have to match the exposure. Uh, most camera will, uh, you know, become useless. This puppy is like, I got this. That is the reason why people invest in cinema camera. That is the, you know, one USP of cinema's camera. It's like, I got this. You can trust your cinema. Like, if you are aimed at correctly, it's going to give you the footage. 
so do you need that for a documentary shooter it's a must because they do not control anything for cinema uh, they have a bit of latitude because they can control the if the like you know uh, in wakanda scene basically they had like you know clouds randomly coming in so they had to introduce a lot of artificial light to blend it in again sometimes you will not have that luxury so you need a camera that can capture it so it's a big investment uh, for lightweight workload no but for uh, medium workload this is kind of investment a bearable investment now what about any other alternate so alternate wise you have sony fx9 now fx9 is a successor to fs7 which was surprisingly successful with tv industry and netflix tv shows basically surprisingly a lot amount of them directly bought them so those people are just jumping into this they are not even considering about uh, basically canon system again you have the system you know how this works you can utilize this now it has some pros some cons obviously sometimes and it's bigger that is one thing i cannot uh, basically uh, that is absolute if you need small camera do not even think about this but if you are comfortable with like a not having or internal raw you can uh, basically look into sony and that is why the sony is still stuck at xqd even though that is their own format they may release a firmware uh, update in the future same way nikon did that um, they may release a firmware update where this puppy can also accept a uh, compact flash express card that would be amazing but right now uh, it's it has some unique advantages that will make it uh, more uh, basically palatable but not that many then you come to kfinity uh, marvo lf which is like two thousand dollars cheaper and they when they are releasing like you know a multiple lens mount option where you can have uh, if you are buying a smaller sensor camera you can get a speed booster integrated into the adapter or you can be like hey i'm gonna like uh, i have sony lenses this puppy allows you sony you have pf lenses it allows you pf lenses it allows canon lenses so that is the amazing benefit of that uh, kfinity system a lot of lens selections so it has amazing thing but does not have dual card system both of them have dual card slot this does not have that now what about panasonic sh1 uh, quite amazing uh, quite limiting in weird way these are like a random crops and uh, other hoo-ha but if you can move around that the biggest issue with this system is it does not have that much lens selection so competition that is in like uh, the three main competitors there basically uh, sony canon and uh, kfinity so Again, now Kfinity is one USP, one unique selling point that it's genuinely awesome. It can go as high as 100 frames per second without any crop. So if you're doing, uh, if you truly have to do like, you know, a lot of high speed footage, that is one uni unique selling point. So competition wise, uh, you know, each of them, like Sony has some, uh, like specifically one feature people love, like specifically documentary shooter is like, it's a variable ND filter. Like once they use it, they're like, yeah, I'm not going back to internal khatang khatang ND filters. I'm like, give me this. So for many people that alone, that alone is like, yeah, I'm buying this. I don't care about it. And autofocus is becoming good enough, but this puppy does not have autofocus. And there are other people who's like, oh, autofocus, what is that? So it's up to you. So as of now, I'm very happy with Canon because this time they really seems like, oh, they are listening to the public. They are learning from their competitor. They're doing quite many things right. So this was my presentation on uh, Canon EOS. Uh, C500 uh, Mark II. I hope you liked it, learn from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I'd urge you to press dislike, press twice to show me your extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.